Uh, thank you, Mr. Dorsey, for being here. Um, news reports indicate that Periscope, as you know, is Twitter's live video feed app, uh, is being used to sexually exploit children. Uh, these reports detail the targeting of children as young as nine years old. At times, coordinated activity from multiple users is employed to persuade children to engage in sexual behavior. These videos can be live streamed in public or private broadcasts on Periscope. I recognize that a live video app like Periscope creates challenges, especially when attempting to monitor content in real time. Yet your testimony discussing malicious election-related activity on Twitter reads, quote, we strongly believe that any such activity on Twitter is unacceptable. I hope that standard of unacceptability is similarly applied to sexual exploitation of children on Periscope. And I would expect that it is, considering that Twitter has stated zero tolerance policy for child sexual exploitation. So my questions are, does Twitter primarily rely on users to report sexually inappropriate content or content concerning child safety? Uh, we, we, we do have uh, some dependency on, on reports, um, but this is an area that we want to move much faster in automating and, uh, and not obviously placing the blame or not placing the work on the, the victim um, and making sure that we are recognizing these in real time and we have made some progress with Periscope. So what is the average length of a live video on Periscope? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of that right now, but we can, we can follow up. Okay. And what is the average response time to remove a live video on Periscope that is deemed to violate Twitter's term of service? It depends uh, entirely on the severity of the report and, uh, and what the context is. Um, so we try to prioritize um, by severity, so uh, threats of, of death or uh, suicidal tendencies would get a higher priority than everything else. So just out of curiosity, when you say we, we try to eliminate and we have a, we have a higher priority, um, like who makes that decision? Uh, we, we have, um, so when people report any violations of our terms of service, we have algorithms looking at the report and then trying to understand how to prioritize those reports so they're seen by humans much faster. Okay. Um, so I would assume that you don't believe that user reporting is an effective method for monitoring live videos on Periscope then? Not, not over the long term. Well, obviously, this is a really, really important issue. Um, is user reporting an effective method for monitoring private broadcasts on Periscope? Um, also not over the long term, uh, but that, that is something that we, um, we need to do much more work around in terms of automating these. So can you uh, indicate that you, you need to do some more work around this? Um, do you have any time frame of when you think you'll be able to get this handled? Uh, we, we'd like to work as, as quickly as possible and make sure that we are prioritizing the uh, proactive approaches of our enforcement. And again, it, it does go down that prioritization stack, but um, we, we intend to move as quickly as we can. I, I know that it's frustrating not to hear a particular time frame, but um, we, are, we are moving fast. Can you explain the type of technology that you're, you're using in order to change this? Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be utilizing a lot of machine learning and deep learning uh, in order to look at um, all of our systems at scale and then also prioritize the, um, the, the, the right uh, review cadence. Okay, uh, I yield back my balance of my time. Thank you. Kelly yields back. Chair recognizes.